This is devotional number 293, and today is During our time together, we'll be examining the subject of how the Bible is a witness. In Acts 14, 17, we find a statement that illustrates God's universal care for His creation in general and mankind in particular. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, in that he did good and gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Now, we can understand this on a physical level for sure, but also there is a spiritual dimension here because of the fact that rain has to do with the former rain which took place on Pentecost, on the day of Pentecost in 33 AD, actually May 22nd, 33 AD to be exact, and also the latter rain which occurred uh, from 1994 to May 21, 2011. Uh, when that rain, the latter rain, ended. And the same thing with the fruitful seasons, uh, having again to do with uh, God's uh, times and seasons and the food and gladness uh, that is being referred to spiritually has to do with the, uh, the meat or the, the, uh, the food of the gospel itself, the spiritual food. Uh, whereby God nourishes his elect. Such a witness uh, does indeed give evidence that God exists, as we read, for example, in Romans 1.20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. However, God has not only revealed himself in creation, but he has given us a book, the Bible, which he has written and lays out his will for mankind, as we see from 2 Peter 1.21. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake, as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Numerous verses like Exodus 7:14a record God's use of human scribes to pen his holy words. And Jehovah said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. We want to also bear in mind that these men were not uh, holy uh, by, by anything by virtue of themselves, but it's because they were saved that they were holy or set apart, as is every child of God. We also read in Deuteronomy 31, 26, take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of Jehovah your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. And Psalm 78, 5 through 7, also offers this reminder, For he established a testimony in Jacob, and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. In Deuteronomy 33, 2, we find this portrait of God's law, the Bible. And he said, Jehovah came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them, he shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints. From his right hand went a fiery law for them. This amazing declaration gives us a glimpse of how binding 
and authoritative the Bible really is. Notice how it is called a fiery law. And fire has everything to do with the justice and judgment of God, as stated in Deuteronomy 4.24. For Jehovah thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4.36 also uh, uh, clarifies this point. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice that he might instruct thee. And upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardest his words out of the midst of the fire. Jeremiah 23, 29 also underscores this. Is not my word like as a fire, saith Jehovah, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? In the New Testament, we learn from John 10:35 that the scripture cannot be broken. And in Luke 16:17, God affirms, it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one tittle of the law to fail. The Bible insists in 1 John 3:4, whosoever transgress, excuse me, whosoever committeth sin, transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. In fact, Romans 4.15a says, because the law worketh wrath. In other words, the Bible as the law of God, which every unsaved person is married to, is their enemy because we have disobeyed it and it stands to accuse us and hold us liable to the consequences of having broken it. This is highlighted in 1 Corinthians 15, 56. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Make no mistake about it, God will prosecute sinners to the full extent of the law which is death and annihilation. He will be vindicated as sin can never go unpunished. Numbers 32:23 warns, ye have sinned against Jehovah and be sure your sin will find you out. Wonderfully, there was a way of escape during the day of salvation as Romans 15:4 promises. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Romans 1.16 also joyously attests, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. The Bible insists in Romans 10, 17, during the day of salvation, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Speaking of the mission of the Lord Jesus to this earth, Matthew 1, 21 declares, and he shall bring forth a son, and thou shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And lastly, 2 Peter 1.19 states, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts.